first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Chaplain Morgan Medford uh, and ask him if he could lead us in the invocation, if you would all stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I ask you to guide each board member's thoughts, their words, their actions, their plans and purposes. Father, each one of us here today has an opportunity to be a positive force for change in our community. Help each of us to take our responsibility seriously. Help us to work together today and every day to make our world a healthier, safer place. Help us to listen to you for your direction. Make whatever work we do to be marked with excellence rather than perfectionism. Help us not to want to make a name for ourselves, but to make a difference in our world. Keep our minds from wandering into distractions that could steal precious time and energy from the most important things that you have designed for each of us. Help each of us to exercise your wisdom today. We ask these things for your glory and your honor. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. like to call this uh, May meeting of the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board to order. I have a uh, public comment um, statement to read first. Any citizen desiring to address the hospital board should turn in a speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen's comment pertains to an item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard early in the meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard it towards the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendors, suppliers, or other persons seeking hospital contracts award on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of the invitation for bid, request for proposals, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of the board the medical staff, administration, and legal counsel to review and negotiate the settlement of claims. Accordingly, the board will not entertain comments or discussion or, or, or discuss or negotiate claims at this meeting. Thank you. Alrighty, orders of the day. I'll uh, ask for a motion uh, regarding the orders of the day. Mr. Chairman, I propose uh, move that we approve the orders of the day. Second. Okay, we have a motion second. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. All right, thank you. Approval of the minutes. Uh, ask for a motion to approve the minutes of April 16th. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the minutes of April the 16th, 2018. Second. We have motion and second. Any uh, adjustments or corrections? All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. All righty, great. Moving right along, we have no board reports today. So uh, next on would be today's education topic, which is bloodless surgery program. And if I could ask uh, Dr. Gardner, Gardner uh, to introduce our speaker, Dr. Adam Bright, please. Excellent. Uh, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Bright. He is an orthopedic surgeon at this hospital. He started here in 2000. Uh, he did his medical school training at the University of Miami, went on to Union Memorial, and then to the University of Maryland to complete his uh, residency and internship. Uh, he is an avid runner, an ultra marathoner, and has recently this this weekend uh, just completed the rim to rim to rim run, which is over 40 miles, almost 50 miles, uh, in a 10,000 foot elevation change. So, kudos. Oh, thank you. It's across the Grand Canyon out west, so it's a little drier there than it is here. Yeah. You, you guys had a lot of rain while I was gone. Um, I, I do want to, I guess, take one just brief moment to express my gratification on being able to work at this hospital. And I, I worked before here at a bunch of other hospitals, and I was up in St. Pete, Clearwater, at eight different hospitals, and this is like the finest place I've been at. And to have this opportunity to start this program here in bloodless surgery is really, like, really cool for me. So um, I guess like 10 years ago, I had a patient that um, 
was a Jehovah's Witness, and then um, I prepared and tried to get ready for, to do the surgery and make sure that I didn't put his, uh, uh, li his life literally in my hands. He loses too much uh, blood if I uh, replace his knee. So he needed his knee replaced, and then he informed me that his uh, church said they needed to go to Tampa General because they have a bloodless surgery program. And I tried to convince him that our hospital has the, some of the finest doctors in the country, and he should stay here, but we don't really have an integrated program until now. So I'm here very grateful to tell you that we now have a bloodless surgery program. Um, I've been blessed with being the chairman right now. Um, but the idea is that we'll be able to, across all the disciplines, and be able to treat patients that uh, have a, a reason they really don't want to get blood. And the Jehovah's Witness community is pretty adamant. It's a religious mandate that they cannot get blood. And so I wanted to find uh, recruit surgeons and, and, and doctors and medical doctors and anesthesia and have an integrated program with a coordinator that can make sure these patients are taken care of in the way that they want to be. So we've uh, recruited a bunch of surgeons from orthopedic, that's in my discipline, doing hips and knees and shoulders and thoracic, doing thoracic cancers and in cardiology and vascular and OB, GYN and general surgery. All the surgeons are motivated to take care of these patients. And additionally, other people that just don't want to have surgery when they might have to get a blood transfusion. So um, we have a bunch of different things that we can do, that our hospital is one of the finest in the country. Uh, minimally invasive surgery we do here routinely, as well as robotic surgery that we probably lead, lead the nation with the robots. A hyperbaric oxygen chamber for patients that have their oxygen level is uh, important. So if you don't have that much uh, blood to carry oxygen, you need a higher level. So the hyperbaric chamber can help. Uh, cell saver units, where if a patient loses some blood during surgery, you can wash the blood and then give it back to them again instead of having to give them to someone else's blood. And most Jehovah's Witnesses to think that that's okay. Um, also, hemostatic drug therapy. So we have various uh, medications that we can give patients, um, as well as various products that we can use to stop bleeding in the operating room. And also bipolar sealer devices, which is a new way of stopping bleeding in surgery that just makes it less likely for them to bleed down the road. So you can stop bleeding right now, but then when they get up on the floor a few days later, they can start bleeding later. And this dramatically makes the surgery safer for them. Um, and people might ask, why do we really need this? Um, there's a few thousand patients in our community that are Jehovah's Witness. There's probably other folks that just don't want to even consider surgery who might need to have to get someone else's blood. Um, but there are risks to getting blood. Um, and having this program is going to make our hospital a better place. It already has. <laughs> So when you get a blood transfusion, uh, there's a less than 1% chance of you having some reaction. Typically, it's like a fever, and it's really something we can handle. But it can go all the way up to having a horrible reaction to someone else's blood, even though we cross-match you, and you can even die. Maybe one in a half million patients. Heart failure, like one in 100 patients will get overwhelmed by getting so much fluid when you give it with the blood. They can affect your heart. Uh, getting HIV, most of my patients are afraid they'll get AIDS virus, and that's honestly one in two million. So I'm not sure that uh, should be the furthest, the, the most important thing on your mind when even dying from the blood itself is a greater odds, but some people don't want to have that stigma. Um, hepatitis B, maybe one in 400,000. Other diseases most of us have not even heard of. West Nile virus and probably things we don't even know about when you get someone else's blood. And even bacteria that can grow in the blood in the laboratory. The main thing that, in my mind, that really makes blood transfusion not the best thing in some instances is the risk of infection, that when you get someone else's blood, it affects your immune system, um, and that is a negative to your body when you're recovering from a surgery, and then it increases the chance of you catching infection. The blood actually doesn't have that bacteria in it, but where we operate, there is bacteria on our skin and our body and the air, and the air that the personnel are breathing, and that can then get into your wound. A sternum has a three-time higher chance of infection, so if someone has a cabbage, a heart bypass, and you open up their chest, and you have to give them someone else's blood, three times higher chance that sternal one's going to get infection in it if you give them someone else's blood. The same thing is true with hip and knee replacement, where it's almost double the chance of infection, your hip or knee, which can be devastating when you have to remove their knee or remove move their hip that you just put in. And also uh, bariatric surgery, almost five times higher chance of infection. So it is true that some patients are healthier than others. Maybe that's why they didn't need to get a blood transfusion. You look at someone who's very sick and they need to get it and you're comparing apples to oranges. But if all of us can't get blood, it's probably a better day. The other thing that's a, a community concern, and it's not our community, it's the, it's the world concern, is we're basically running out of blood. It's not an endless resource. We have to rely on volunteers who have to donate their time, donate their blood, and then feel weak and maybe even get affected by giving blood so that you might need it. And our community is gradually running out. Basically, our population is continuing to get older. And as you get older, you have less blood, and you need more when you have surgery. And, and it's not as safe to remove blood from people that are older. Eventually, you reach a point when the, our population that is needing blood, they can't donate. They actually need. And we have more of them than ones that can give. 
And right now we don't have a good synthetic substitute, so we need to save this precious resource. So um, the best practice, this is the way I try to get patients ready for surgery with our new program, is to make sure if they have anemia, you treat it beforehand, give them a good diet, give them iron if they need that, erythropoietin, which is a hormone to help you make blood, give them fluids so they're hydrated, so the blood is, uh, if you lose blood, it's a, it's a more dilute a loss of blood. Anesthesia, that when you use spinal anesthesia, there's less blood loss, you keep the blood pressure a little bit lower, basically you don't leak as much. Uh, Tranexamic acid is a new product our hospital has that can help stop bleeding. And I started a new way of giving it when you mix it up and can just apply it on the wound for patients that have risk of getting it intravenous. Also, we, I think we have some of the best surgeons in our program. These are the guys that you want to operate on you. So these patients are they are going to get treated by this. We, I uh, personally vetted all the doctors that are going to operate in the blood the surgery program and make sure they're ones that are going to be safe for our patients. The surgery, uh, doing an injection with epinephrine around the wound that helps and, uh, with numbing medicine, that can help. Uh, less invasive surgery, using these uh, uh, devices we talked about earlier. And then after the surgery, getting the right doctors to treat them. Our hospitalists here, I work with them. I work with their anesthesia department. But we don't want to draw blood routinely just, just because it's on orders. You want to draw blood with purpose to make sure you actually need to remove this person's blood. There's got to be a reason you're looking for something. Don't just draw blood out of them every day and limit the amount you're going to draw. Don't give them too many things that will make them continue to bleed after surgery, like anticoagulants. If their blood is a little bit low, don't automatically just give blood. You need to just find out the patient's receptive to that, and sometimes they, the patients are not symptomatic, and they're doing fine with lower blood count than normal. So now we have new orders that sets in the hospital, and new armbands, and we have everything ready for our patients who are below the surgery program. So many has any questions, I think I know most of the stuff about below the surgery. Yes? Um, I'm not a blood bank expert, so um, I would refer you to the blood bank. So that we do have, um, the county has a blood bank, and our hospital's in a, sort of like a group purchasing organization when we keep the blood in our community and we share it with other hospitals. So if we're needing more and other hospitals have more, we share. But we're the highest user in our, uh, in our group purchasing well, blood. I'm just wondering if people with uh, blood pressure medication, for example, are candidates for donating. I wish I knew the answer. I don't know about the donation side. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, a surgeon, so I would assume that if a person's on a blood thinner, you wouldn't want that person to donate blood. If there's blood thinner product in the blood, it can make you bleed. But blood pressure stuff, I'm, I'm not certain. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you very Second. much, doctor. Appreciate that. David, uh, you're up next with our uh, Excel Award winner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to invite uh, Jane Trapasso to come up with me. Jane? So, Jane is our Excel Award winner for May of 2018. She is uh, an appeals and denial uh, reimbursement specialist in our patient financial services and has worked at Sarasota Memorial since 2009. After many negotiations with many different insurance companies, I can honestly say I appreciate you, Jane, for everything you do. Yeah, we really all do, okay? Clearly, I'm not alone. As I read Jane's nominations, you'll see why. They start like this every time. Every leader dreams of having someone as supportive and productive as Jane Trapasso. She and her team pursue commercial insurance denials and underpayment recoveries. Last year, with Jane's leadership, their success rate in an industry in it was an industry leading 90%. She achieves this with a smile and a positive attitude. One coworker says, Jane is one of the most polite people I know. She's always willing to help and share her vast knowledge with others, says another. She's a team player who gives great advice. Jane is someone who you can depend on to do the right thing each and every time. Jane, thank you so much for everything you do. Congratulations, Jane. May I read it for you real quick? Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you can read. Uh, <laughs> anybody who can collect money out of an insurance company yeah. is my hero. Uh, 
<laughs> Excel Award uh, recipients are employees who are models of excellence and consistently demonstrate the mission, vision, and values of our organization. They are superior performers that make an extra effort in the quality and care of our patients and families in the community. The hospital board and administrative staff of Sarasota Memorial Health Care System recognizes Jane Tripasso with the Excel Award for the month of May 2018 signed by our president, David Verinder, and our chairman, Joseph D. Virgilio. So congratulations. Thank Good you. job. Good Absolutely. Good 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 <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say I'm very honored that everyone that nominated me. Um, and I also just want to say that I feel very privileged to work for such a great organization. And it is a very rewarding position, working appeals and denials. Um, in the fact that not only am I getting a lot of money for the hospital, but I also get claims overturned so patients don't get high bills. No one likes to get a $50,000 bill. So if I can get that overturned by the insurance company, I feel like I've won a great deal. So thank you very much. Thank you. Right I'll tell you, it's a tough job, and um, we very much appreciate you doing that. All right, David, next up you have the leader of the uh, leadership award. I do, and I'm um, going to invite Sue Olson, our leader of the year, to come up here with me. Sue. So Sue Olson, is, she's got a lot of uh, initials behind her name, so I can't go through them all, but she's a nurse, okay? <laughs> Look at all those. It's like you're a general. I know. <laughs> Our leader of the year, Sue is Director of Critical Care, Trauma Services, Hemodialysis, Rapid Response Team, MPCU, and Trauma Progressive Unit. She's been with Sarasota Memorial since 1992. Sue's peers and coworkers all say she's an, she's an excellent, authentic nursing leader, and there are many reasons they feel this way. One reason is her patient advocacy. She communicates effectively with everyone who may dictate the patient experience. Her coworkers say, including frontline staff. Others compliment her, initi her initiatives. Sue loves to pilot new initiatives and inspire process improvement. She has been a pivotal leader in the success of our cardiovascular services and trauma services, helping manage increases in volume while ensuring quality of care. Sue also received high marks for her management skills. She works well with physicians and values the opinions of coworkers. She is confident and passionate about her career and enjoys helping her staff succeed. Sue is an expert at helping others develop into something greater than they knew they could be. Sue, thank you for everything thank you've you. done, and we so much appreciate it. Well, as I said at Management Council, I'm very humbled to um, receive this. I've had the good fortune of working, first of all, at the best facility that you could possibly work at. Second, um, I've had some great mentors in my life. Um, my dad, my aunts, and Connie has been a great mentor to me. And um, I couldn't do it without my team. I have a great, 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 great team. So it takes a lot of people to, to run um, the areas that I do and love doing it every day. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, um, I, I do just want to take a second, and because it's kind of nice at the annual time when we get to recognize our annual leaders, to thank Mr. Tollerton for um, his continued support of the Excel program. So, Jim, thank you so much. And um, and just uh, so, did she leave? Yes, right out that the door. quick. Okay. <laughs> so, so, just so you'll know, we uh, we did give her a plaque and a and a, and a small gift. Uh, for her accomplishment at Management Council. So um, she's already received that. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Next, next up, we have our uh, uh, medical staff report from our chief of staff, Dr. Carl Gardner. Uh, thank you very much. Um, basically, uh, at the recent Medical Executive Committee, uh, uh, we had two issues basically regarding uh, cardiology department rules. We approved those. Uh, as well as the pathology privilege form. We're in the process of updating these forms to coincide with our joint commission requirements as well as updating them to fall in line with what the hospital bylaws are, so we'll be seeing these more often, but uh, we're cooking along and doing quite well. 
So they, I think there's somebody who has a motion yeah, later before to we get to approve that, I just want to thank your efforts and the medical staff efforts with the Joint Commission uh, survey we had. I think a lot of this work that you did was a precursor to the positive results we got. So thank you. Thank you. So uh, Mr. Bill? Mr. Chairman, I have two motions in support of Dr. Garner's uh, remarks. Um, I first is I move approval of the cardiology department rules as approved by the department and recommended by the medical executive committee. You have a second? Second. I move the motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. All right. And the second motion is I move approval of the pathology privilege form as recommended by the medical executive committee. Second. You have a motion and second. Any discussion? Those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. All right. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Anything further? I have nothing further. The Joint Commission, as you said, was, was an exceptional uh, experience for all of us and uh, thrilled to be done with it now. There you go. <laughs> exceptional and won't need it, need it for another three years. That's so exactly that's, that's uh, what that's we have. Uh, nothing great. further to report. All right, great. Foundation report, Mason Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, wanted to report on two activities that uh, the foundation has been involved in since the last board meeting. Uh, first of all, I wanted the board and the community to know that the latest edition of the Envision magazine has been mailed. Uh, the feature story for this edition is the SMH orthopedics program. And also I wanted to let you know that this is going to be our last edition of the magazine. Uh, we are working on a new format for the upcoming fall. Um, and then secondly, I wanted to let the board know that on May 4th, we had our annual golf tournament at Laurel Oak Country Club. Uh, the proceeds from the tournament go towards funding the SMH Physician Endowment, which is uh, used to help fund ongoing educational programs for the SMH staff. Very happy to report that we had a record number of golfers play in this year's tournament, and we raised a record amount of money, $128,000 was raised. Outstanding. Uh, that concludes my report. Well, it was a thank you, and it was a beautiful day out there. I'd been out there when the we got uh, monsoon rain, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you picked the right week because immediately following that, we got the monsoon rain. Exactly. So, uh, Timed well, it perfectly. It, it was a beautiful, beautiful day out there. Uh, Secretary's report, Tram Hudson. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to bring to the board's attention and the public's attention that there'll be a series of meetings um, in the next uh, three or four weeks. <coughs> First meeting on Thursday, May 31st from 8 o'clock in the morning till 11 in the morning will be a strategic planning session and this will be a closed meeting. On Monday, June the 18th, from 9 to 10.30, the Human Resources Committee will meet. From 10.30 until noon, Mission and Planning Committee will meet. Uh, at noon, we will conduct peer review. And from 12.30 to 2, we will have our uh, issue and financial uh, review. And finally, at 2 p.m. in this very room, we will have our board meeting. That's all I have to report, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Susan Tucker with a treasurer's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of the bad debts and charity care for the month ended April 30th, 2018, in the amount of $18,014,000. You have a second? Second. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. All right, thank you. Moving right along here. Uh, financial highlights, Bill Wolgin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I have the highlights for April 2018, and the uh, this being the seventh month of our fiscal year, the year-to-date numbers represent seven months of activity. So we'll start with operating revenue for the system. For the month of April, 75536000 compared to a budget of 67020000 Fiscal year to date, operating revenue of 505075000 compared to a budget of 463238000 For the system's total expenses for April, 67981000 compared to a budget of 66,878,000. Fiscal year to date, 
$469,587,000 compared to a budget of $457,209,000. For the system's operating income in the rating agency format, for April, $10,669,000 compared to a budget of $3,492,000. April's operating margin was 13.3% compared to the budgeted operating margin of 4.9%. Through seven months in our fiscal year, operating income of 58,334,000, which is an operating margin of 10.9%, compared favorably to the budget of 29,484,000, which is an operating margin of 6%. Looking at some hospital statistics, these are all seven-month year-to-date numbers. Average daily occupancy, 538 patients per day, compared to a budget of 539. Admissions, 21,764, compared to the budget of 20, 20,804. So far this fiscal year, our average acute length of stay is 4.48 days, uh, which matches what it was last year. For the hospital's surgery cases, 13,919, compared to the budget of 13,852. And so far through seven months, we've had 2,040 births, a little bit less than the budget of 2,140. For operating for outpatient registrations for the hospital, 280,370 compared to a budget of 271,997. And registrations in our emergency care centers, 75,117 compared to a budget of 75,973. <coughs> and so far through seven months, our, our case mix index for all patients stands at 1.86 and for Medicare patients, 1.93. Mr. Chairman, that completes my report unless there's any questions. Any questions? Thank you, Bill. Thank you. All right, we have one uh, committee report, uh, and that's Mission and Planning, Greg Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, opening the Mission and Planning Committee meeting, uh, Mickey Watson, our Director of Public Safety and Security, presented the FEMA Mitigation Resolution. Sarasota County Emergency Management is requesting the Hospital Board's support of the uh, Location Mitigation Strategy Resolution. And Chief Watson gave a brief overview of the Sarasota County Local Mitigation Strategy, along with the importance of supporting the resolution. And at this time, I'd like to ask Carol Ann uh, if she could read the resolution. Certainly. This is a resolution entitled, A Resolution of the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board, Sarasota, Florida, adopting the Sarasota County Local Mitigation Strategy as a formal guide for the hospital's hazard mitigation strategy and activities in accordance with 42 U.S.C. Section 5165, 44 CFR Section 2.0, no, 201.6, Part 1 of Chapter 252, Florida Statutes, and Chapter 27P-22 of the Florida Administrative Code, providing an effective date. Whereas the Sarasota County Local Mitigation Strategy is the representation of Sarasota County and the hospital's commitment to reduce vulnerability and risks from natural hazards, serving as a policy guide as resources are committed toward <coughs> reducing the effects of natural hazards, and whereas the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board is subject to natural hazards, including severe weather, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, and fires, and faces potential damage to life, property, natural resources, and the local economy, and whereas the Sarasota County Local Mitigation Strategy Work Group, the work group, is comprised, uh, comprised of employees <coughs> and community members of the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board, Sarasota County Government, City of Sarasota, City of Venice, City of Northport, Town of Longboat Key, Sarasota County School Board, and is open for participation to any and all other interested parties and is chaired by the Sarasota County Emergency Management Chief or his designee. And whereas the work group has identified the above listed local hazards and has assessed countywide vulnerability and risks from these hazards, 
ultimately identifying and prioritizing mitigation initiatives that would reduce local vulnerability. And whereas the work group has identified certain initiatives with a local mitigation strategy initiative list based upon established and accepted criteria, and whereas the work group's local mitigation strategy initiatives lists are given more consideration by state managed funding programs, including but not limited to the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, the Flood Mitigation Assistance Program, the Pre-Disaster Mitigation Competitive Grant Program, the Emergency Management Preparedness and Assistance Trust Fund, Communities Trust, Community Development Block Grant, and Coastal Partnerships Initiative, and whereas an adopted local mitigation strategy can serve as the flood mitigation plan as required of all communities participating in the National Flood Insurance Program and seeking project funding from the Flood Mitigation Assistance Program. And whereas the local mitigation strategy supplements and complements the post-disaster redevelopment plan as required of all coastal communities in Florida by Chapter 27P-22 of the Florida Administrative Code as part of the County Comprehensive Growth Management Plan, and whereas the local mitigation strategy is designed to be a process-oriented document with review and revision policies that allow the local mitigation strategy to be changed to meet new or changing conditions, including hazard event frequency, perceived local needs, completed project and projects and initiatives, and funding opportunities. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board of Sarasota County, Florida, that the above recitals are true and correct and are hereby fully adopted by reference, that the Sarasota County local mitigation strategy, having been fully coordinated with all supporting departments, agencies, and participating jurisdictions of Sarasota County government, is hereby adopted by the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board for pursuing hazard mitigation activities and initiatives. Further details on the Sarasota County local mitigation strategy can be obtained from the Sarasota County website at https colon backslash backslash www.scgov.net backslash government backslash emergency dash services backslash local dash mitigation dash strategy. The Sarasota County Public Hospital Board hereby authorizes the emergency management coordinator or his or her designee to continue to participate as an active member of the Sarasota County Local Mitigation Strategy Work Group, group to implement goals and to pursue and apply for potential grant funding opportunities for mitigation projects. This resolution shall take effect immediately upon adoption to be hereby adopted by the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board on this date and to be signed by Joe DiVirgilio as chair. Thank you, Carol Ann. My pleasure. Uh, I move adoption of the published resolution regarding local mitigation strategy as recommended by the Michigan Planning Committee. Second. I'm afraid to ask any questions or comments. <laughs> <laughs> any questions or comments? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, we're, it's passed. Thank you, Carol Ann. I'm glad I didn't have to read that. All right, uh, Greg, you have something more. Yes. Uh, our, our next item was uh, David Patterson, our Associate Chief Nursing Officer, and Jennifer Sol uh, Sullivan, Director of Cardiovascular Services, presented a request to renovate cardiac <coughs> catheterization lab number one. The presenters opened with an overview of Sarasota Memorial's strategic roadmap and the evolution of the comprehensive cardiovascular service line. They then presented or expanded on the uh, comprehensive cardiovascular service line by discussing the, the growth that has occurred in the past three years. Contrary to the national trend, which remains flat, the number of cardiac surgeries done at Sarasota Memorial has increased each year since 2013. The presenters described the challenges that have come along with the growth, which included space constraints. A four-phased approach was presented to meet the demands of the patient population through renovation and expansion of the cardiac catheterization and electrophysiology, <laughs> electrophysiology labs. The first phase, renovation of cardiac catheterization lab number one, would help optimize clinical quality by using the most up-to-date technology. And they concluded the presentation with a timeline of construction and estimated project expenses. The proposed project completion date is October of 2018. At this time, I move approval of the funding for the renovation of cardiac catheterization lab number one, including the purchase of new equipment and construction as budgeted in fiscal year 2018 
in an amount not to exceed $2 million as recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. All right. Thank you. And lastly, uh, Lori Lang, our Chief Operating Officer, and David Patterson gave an update on Orchestrate, a technology implemented in the operating room in fiscal year 2017 as part of the Capacity Improvement Plan. Orchestrate has allowed the operating room to improve patient flow and increase capacity. With the implementation of Orchestrate, the OR has met each of their initial goals. Orchestrate has allowed staff and surgeons to embrace technology and continuously improve efficiencies. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Greg, appreciate it. All right, uh, next up, our President's Report, David. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's start like I do every month with our uh, report card that is our fiscal year to date, 2018 uh, through April. We start with our service pillar and look at our HCAP scores. Uh, we have a goal of being eight out of 11, being uh, eight out of 11 of the domains being greater than or equal to 50th percentile. Are falling a little bit short of that right now. We're at six out of 11, uh, and I have a um, bigger report on that here in a minute. On the outpatient side, we have a goal of being 58, 55 out of 58 of the domains at greater than or equal to 50th percentile. Happy to report we are meeting that one. We're at 55 out of 58. In the people pillar, we have a goal of being turnover of uh, part-time and full-time employees that have been hired within the last 12 months being at 25% or lower. Happy to report we are exceeding that, or exceeding that in a good way at 24.1%. In equality uh, pillar, we have infection prevention, which is our combined overall and standardized infection rate, uh, being less than 0.95. Happy to report we are we are less than that at 0.82, which is uh, pretty phenomenal uh, when you look at a national average of 1.0. In a financial finance pillar, uh, as our CFO Bill Wojan has just uh, talked about, we have an operating margin or a goal of 5.4%. Uh, we are projecting to exceed that at 8.4% at this point. And then finally, in our growth pillar, we have two goals, the first being our inpatient admissions and observation outpatients, having a goal of being at 43,429. Happy to report we are expecting to, we're, we're projecting to uh, meet that or, or exceed that at 44,357. On the outpatient registrations, we have our goal of 789,301. And we are expecting to exceed that as well, projecting to exceed that at 797,873. Looking a little deeper into our HCAP scores, you can see the, um, the, the, the kind of in the middle of the page, the, the items that we're having some difficulty or not quite meeting the, the 50th percentile on. That includes responsiveness of hospital staff, communication with doctors, cleanliness of the hospital environment, quietness of the hospital environment, and communication with medicines. There is a tremendous amount of work going on on this, and we just had a, about an hour-long conversation about this um, in, in our board lunch today uh, with a, a lot of different actions that are going on, really headed up with um, our Chief Operating Officer, Lori Lang, and our Chief Nursing Officer, uh, Connie Anderson. Uh, we feel good about where, we, where we're going. We wish our numbers were a bit higher right now, but we do feel good about where we're going and, the, and have been able to, to hit the needs of our patients going into this past season. I do like to look at this and compare it to get a little perspective uh, into the region and, uh, and in, into the state. First, we do have the region here, and you can see the various regional hospitals uh, that I have listed here. Uh, at this point in time, um, this is, and this is off of Medicare.gov website. Uh, we are seven out of out of eleven, and then you can see where the other hospitals uh, in the region sit. So I, I think that from that comparison, we sit pretty well. When we go off and look at other hospitals throughout the state, the other large hospitals throughout the state of Florida, once again we're at seven out of eleven on this report. Uh, one other hospital is at 7 out of 11, which would be Morton Plant Mace, and then one is at 9 out of 11, which is Florida Hospital or the Adventist Group. Um, rest are, are struggling a, a bit, so once again, I think we 
we have good results. We just would always like to be better, and we're continuing to work on that. Moving into our service pillar, uh, we um, had a, a national, April 15th through uh, the 21st was National Volunteer Week, uh, which is just an opportunity for us to pay tribute to our volunteers who are generously contribute their time and expertise to Sarasota Memorial. Ranging in age from high school students to retirees, we currently have 625 exceptional volunteers donating more than 75,000 hours of service this past year, both from front lines uh, of patient care to behind the scenes of support areas. And, and we just, we could not run this facility uh, to the level we do without these volunteers, and we thank each and every one of them. Uh, always looking for more. So uh, if you are so inclined uh, and really talking to the public here, we, are, we would greatly appreciate your um, application for that. Staying in service, this is uh, one of the things that we get to do each year is to give away some uh, scholarships. It's the Duncan Finley uh, uh, Health Career Scholarships, which we awarded to several qualifying local teens to help them pursue careers in health care. Each student will receive $10,000 to help offset the cost of college tuition and expenses over four years. Since 1993, the scholarships have produced an incredible $550,000 for a total of 137 outstanding high school seniors. The scholarships are provided by the Healthcare Memorial Healthcare Foundation, funded by the SMH Auxiliary Endowment. And I, I will tell you that that is always a special moment that we get to do each and every year. Mason, Mason, I know you join me in that. Uh, we are. Um, it, it truly makes the difference between some of these kids being able to go and continue and go to college uh, and not. And uh, it, is, it is a very moving and meaningful uh, evening. So, Mason, thank you for your help and helping make that work out. Continuing in service, um, we, we, uh, Team SMH supports our efforts throughout our community. Last month, Team SMH raised 2200 for American Cancer Society's Relay for Life event in Northport. Staff, uh, who are pictured at the left, represented SMH's Northport Health Center. Above 10 members of Team SMH participated in the April f uh, 7th Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation One Walk at Benderson Park, which we raised $2,860. So thank you for our volunteers. Moving into quality, uh, I'm happy to report SMH was named among the world's best uh, workplaces by Gallup uh, Workplace Award. Sarasota Memorial was one of just 39 organizations to win Gallup's Global Great Workplace Award. award. The award honors the, most, the, the, the world's best workplaces for creating an environment and culture that inspires employee commitment and engagement. So thank you uh, for, to the board for getting, having us be able to provide this each and every year and having for our employees to work here and, of course, for our employees to staying so engaged and taking care of the, our community. Continuing in quality, Sarasota Memorials received an A for protecting patients from preventable injuries and harm and for meet, meeting the highest safety standards in the United States. The LeapFrog Group announced in its most recent hospital uh, safety report card. SMH was one of 750 hospitals nationwide that received the LeapFrog's um, highest mark for a grading period. This is our fourth consecutive A that we have earned. Uh, since the hospital began participating in LeapFrog survey back in 2016. Continuing in quality, Sarasota Memorial's Bariatric and Metabolic uh, Health Center has been accredited as a, at a, as a higher level comprehensive center by a, by a joint program of the American College of Surgeons and American College for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. This signifies SMH's um, bariatric team meets the highest standards established for the na in the nation for the care of bari bariatric patients. The bariatric team hosts free, ongoing Meet the Surgeon seminars for the public to explain different weight loss surgery options as well as lifetime support groups. We would encourage you to go to one of our seminars, which would be on our website. In the people category, we have new leadership in our behavior health services. Sarasota Memorial named Terry Cassidy to lead the Bayside Center for Behavioral Health in its regional safety net of addiction and mental health services. A longtime leader in the community and hospital-based mental health, mental behavior health, and substance abuse programs, Terry is a licensed independent clinical social worker. During a career that spans nearly 25 years, 
Terry has helped a number of organizations spearhead programs and secure grant funds to address specific needs to the, in the community she has served. We're just happy that she has, uh, continue, has moved down to Sarasota, and we welcome her, so please extend her a welcome. The other person we'd like to uh, welcome on is our operations of plant facilities. John Salt, who was recently named director of Sarasota Memorial's operation of plant and facilities. John was the founder and principal of the architecture firm Salt Co. Uh, LLC, which has partnered with Sarasota Memorial on a number of main campus and ambulatory site projects. Many SMH staff and a number of clinical departments have worked with John over the years in his role as an architectural consultant. John brings decades of extensive knowledge and experience with the healthcare regulations, environment of care, safety standards. So please welcome John to our team as well. Continuing in people, uh, we had the, op uh, the honor of honoring our 1,400 plus nurses. And the honor of the, in honor of Nurses Week, SMH posted a special breakfast followed by the annual Nursing Excellence Awards given to caregivers who epitomize the, the values that we've made, that have made Sarasota Memorial Magnet Hospital for nursing, a national designation SMH has achieved continu continuously since 2003. Events also include a new knowledge and innovative conference and a blessing of the hands rounds on, rounds on nursing units. Last month, we had the opportunity, Sarasota Memorial held its <laughs> annual service anniversary celebrating, celebration, honoring the dedication and contributions of hundreds of employees marking five to 40 years of service within our organization. Just want to point out uh, one person, um, Barbara pitt Pincher, uh, who's uh, on the left-hand picture, who's an OBGYN, a sonographer with FPG, celebrated an incredible 40 years with the system. And I know several of our board members had the opportunity to be there and thank her for her service. But we appreciate everyone who was recognized that night. In the growth section, we had plans for our, our South County Hospital. Uh, took a major step forward this past month. Earlier this month, a judge affirmed the Agency for Healthcare Administration's initial decision to approve SMH's proposed proposal to establish a new hospital on Laurel Road at I-75. SMH's five-star care will raise the bar on the hospital services in South County and ease space constraints on the main campus. The Laurel Road Hospital is expected to open in about three years after final, final state approval is given. The new facility will bring Sarasota Memorial Health hospitals physician base further south and help build the medical staff for a future Northport hospital. Continuing in growth, our parking garage uh, construction is underway and I know a lot of people will be happy to hear that. We have our new uh, 583 space garage will help increase our main campus parking when it opens in December 2018. Uh, you can see the picture there of the construction going on. This is a little dated. It's actually got even more, con you know, more has happened on that site since this. And we are very much looking forward and in the need of this. We always have a number of free lecture series. Uh, you can see the list of them in front of you. I would also encourage, um, if you're interested, go to, go to the website, take a look at the free lectures. We do ask that you RSVP just so we can get a count of people to, to know to expect, but uh, please take advantage of those opportunities. And that is my report, Mr. Chairman. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? David, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next up, do we have anything on the consent agenda? Nothing? All right, public comment? No. All righty. Legal matters? No report. Oh, goodness. Wait, wait, I'll leave something. There you go. You want to repeat that, what you read before? Okay, there you go. All righty. Uh, any other business for this group? Hearing Mr. none, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I was going to say I moved.